Hello, Dr. Vincenti, and welcome to Computer Science Chats. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm great as well. Thank you. I have several questions for you. So first, could you please introduce yourself and your educational background? Uh, sure. My name is Giovanni Vincenti. I'm currently an associate professor at the University of Baltimore in the program of Applied Information Technology. Uh, my educational background is a bit uh, mixed <laughs> in the sense that I started as a biology major. I wanted to be a doctor, uh, and then I ended up a different kind of doctor. Um, I switched to computer science for my master's and then uh, applied information technology for my doctorate. Thank you. So what is it that inspired you to pursue computing as a career? So the, um, I think that the honest answer is, is way less romantic than probably <laughs> it should be. Um, I came to the United States as a, um, as a foreign student and uh, uh, my original dream was to get into med school um, or at least my original goal, let's put it that way, uh, was to get into med school. I, I got my bachelor's in biology. I did not get into med school. Um, so I needed to, uh, to find a, I, I really enjoyed being here in the United States. I wanted to stay longer. Um, I had to find quickly something that, um, made sense. And at the time, um, bioinformatics was starting to become big. So since I, I, I was okay at tinkering with computers and I understood at least the foundations of biology, I said, yeah, let's try with uh, computer science. And then, um, the interest in bioinformatics did not last long, but the love for computer science definitely uh, kind of blossomed after that point. That's very interesting. So how would you describe uh, computer science or computing fields in general? Um, I, I think that a, a single description is probably uh, a bit too uh, ambitious. Um, my um, my field, my, my primary uh, occupation is, is in teaching information technology. So I would very much um, define information technology as basically problem solving um, on, um, of course, using computers. Um, also in particular, I uh, teach all the computer programming as well as database courses. So to me, it's, uh, it's about creating, it's about producing, it's about tackling problems and getting them solved through computing. Uh, of course, if, if we look into computer science, that tends to be uh, pure computer science, that tends to be more theoretical than, than anything. Um, but for me and, and my students, I usually try to focus on the problem solving aspect that computers may bring to everyday life. Yeah. Could you describe some of the activities that you do through your work? Uh, sure. So I, um, the, the, the work itself is, is relatively uh, similar to other um, academics in the sense that I have a certain amount of, of time that I spend teaching. Uh, that's usually about 60-70% of my time. And then um, there's quite a bit of time uh, that I spend to admin, on, on administrative tasks. Uh, and then, of course, research as well. Um, the, the part where I do try to make things a bit more interesting for myself and for my students are, um, of course, during the teaching com uh, component. But lately, I've been trying to join my, uh, my research as well. Um, originally, I was interested in data mining, uh, and I still am interested in data mining. Uh, however, the necessities of my job required that I focus on education. So I, I started looking into project-based learning and how to create very applied, very concrete experiences for students. And that's, that's basically where I spend a significant amount of my time. Um, we have a, a couple of projects that are very hands-on um, and um, our students are quite happy um, and they, they develop skills quite quickly as well. So they, they tend to get really nice uh, positions afterwards. And uh, um, so that makes me happy. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. What do you like most and what do you find most challenging about these activities? 
Um, one of the things that I like the most is um, in my, at my university, we have uh, students that are um, often referred to as non-traditional. So when you have an average age of undergraduate students, for example, at around 21, 22, that's a relatively traditional uh, university. Uh, instead, at, uh, at the University of Baltimore, the average age for undergraduate students, I believe, is 28. So we tend to have students who are a little bit older, and they often come from um, one or sometimes even two careers. Um, I had a student in his 70s, actually. He had already retired twice, and he wanted to get into, um, into technology, information technology. Um, but uh, seeing these, these students kind of change the direction of their lives from whatever it was before to information technology is, is quite rewarding. <laughs> the, uh, the challenging part is actually um, very much the same in terms of the, the background. Um, so older students um, who need to be sent to the workforce or onto their graduate degrees quickly. Uh, but of course, they don't have years and years of experience, for example, like uh, yourself, who may, uh, who may have already spent several years uh, in, in uh, at least preparing your, your um, foundations in computing. Uh, we may have some students who are completely new. Uh, they have a family and they need to get a job as soon as they graduate. So um, preparing those students can be a bit challenging. That's very interesting. What advice would you have for high school students who would like to get into this field? Um, I would say don't go into this field with um, just a, a, a field that you are going to um, just kind of put your blinders on and forget about everything else. Um, there are so many advancements that are um, really blossoming into new avenues of research every, um, every few months or every couple of years that um, if, if somebody says, okay, for example, let's take myself as a, as a I guess, um, guinea pig, so to speak. If I just had focused on bioinformatics, 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 uh, I would have missed so much more. And especially I wouldn't have um, the, the, the joy of teaching. And for example, now I'm, I'm doing a bunch of things with augmented reality and uh, that has nothing to do with bioinformatics. I'm, I'm doing things with artificial intelligence a little bit. Um, so it's, um, I would recommend since it's such a dynamic field, just kind of um, have your ideas somewhat clear, but don't, don't put your blinders on. Don't, um, don't forget to, to kind of look around and see what else could be interesting out there. Thank you. Where do you think that computing if, ed, where do you think that computing is going to go in the future? Uh, <laughs> I think that's the um, that's a question I'm not sure I should answer. Um, because I've always been wrong in the past about this, <laughs> if anything. Um, I hope it will be more of, um, of service to humanity uh, in the sense that I hope that we're going to go back to the main concept of computing being a helpful tool rather being, than it being an end to whatever means. Um, and um, I'm, I'm sure at some point you have uh, watched the movie Terminator. So um, I'm, I'm, I don't think we're going to have Skynet anytime soon. But also, I don't think that having computers for the sake of having um, like artificial intelligence, general um, artificial intelligence, um, is is really the way to go. I, I would much rather have. Uh, solutions that come up. Um, of course, 
some will argue general artificial intelligence will come up with solutions to other problems, sure. Uh, but there is there is definitely a, I hope there's gonna be a, a return to, to technology as a way to improve our lives rather than just focusing on technology for the sake of technology. Yeah, and that also leads into my next question. Where do you think that computing education is going to go in the future? Uh, something that I have uh, pleasantly observed over the last few years is, is a very um, significant uptake in um, computer science education positions. So what used to be um, college level instructors or professors who are dedicated to their discipline, whatever that discipline may be, um, they have to teach because that's just what the job required. And then they could do research in whatever field they wanted. However, in the last few years, and especially in the last two years, I must say, I've seen a lot of positions um, for computer science education faculty. Um, so basically people who are interested in, in teaching computer science or improving how we teach computer science. So I'm, I'm very hopeful that um, if anything, there's, there's gonna be a um, lowering of the, of the barrier that some people experience. Um, for example, whenever I teach uh, data structures, uh, that seems to be a very abstract concept, even though everybody knows how a queue works at the bank or how a stack of plates uh, works whenever you go to a buffet. But whenever we are talking about implementing all these um, data structures and code, then people get lost. And that's, that tends to be one of the, the weeder courses where, where students kind of give up. Um, but hopefully we're gonna have better tools to, to let people experience or, or grasp those concepts, looking at them from different perspectives. And I think that computer science education, educators that are into computer science education will be extremely helpful towards that. So I'm, I'm hopeful there will be a, a, a greater interest in computer science, uh, simply because people are not gonna find it as, as difficult as uh, sometimes it sounds. Thank you very much for meeting with me and for being willing to do this interview. Oh, sure. Thank you.